Welcome to Conversations with Sarah. I'm Sarah Redden, Therapeutic Coach of SRTT, and today I'm joined by Anna Meggett of Animated Physiotherapy. Anna is a physiotherapist, plus instructor, and a certified mummy MOT practitioner on a mission to help you reduce pain and get back to the activities that you love. Welcome, Anna. Thank you for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I did Pilates ooh, maybe like 20 years ago, I did a Pilates class, so I don't feel like I really know much about Pilates at all. So I'm quite interested to hear from your point of view, in really simple terms, what is Pilates? So Pilates is a form of exercise. Um, it was originated by someone called Joseph Pilates, and he came up with an exercise regime that consisted of 34 different exercises. And he actually started off by giving it to um, soldiers that were injured in war. Um, it's been adapted over time. He then moved it into, I think, New York and started using it with um, dancers. And it was a really good way to get them stronger and to help with their rehab. And then since then, it's kind of developed into lots of different schools that teach Pilates as a form of exercise. Um, and it exists in lots of different forms. So the form that I teach is um, APPI Pilates, which is a, a clinical form of Pilates. I'm a physio and the type of Pilates that I do is probably different to maybe what you go to in a gym with a fitness instructor. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm trying to look at it from, um, I guess, a point of view, more like helping you if you've got an injury, back pain, that sort of thing. So the type of Pilates I do is almost like a, an adapted version yeah. Um, so it's a form of exercise that I'll give you to try and help with um, reducing your aches and pains and moving in a way that we can adapt around any injuries that you might have. Perfect. Thank you. So how, how did you get into Pilates? I've been working as a physio for um, quite a while now, about 12 years now. And um, I was actually working at a um, private clinic and they were having lots of patients through. Actually, I was seeing quite a lot of like higher level sports people that did triathlons, rugby, that sort of thing. And they're getting injured and they weren't really progressing as we wanted them to with um, their rehab. So my um, my boss at the time was like, it'd be really great if I had someone that took Pilates from here. And actually at the time, I didn't know that much about it myself, mm. um, but I did the course and I was just, when I started teaching it to patients, I was just so amazed with the results. Like I didn't, the kind of that thing that I didn't really believe it until I started doing it. Yeah. And I saw the massive change it made to people and that just got me hooked. And so I've been taking um, Pilates sort of one-to-one -one sessions and group um, classes now for about the last nine years or so now. Yeah. I think that's really interesting because sort of my, um, in my head when I think about Pilates, it's kind of it is wearing a leotard, standing in the gym, doing a bit of stretching or years and years ago, there used to be these like Pilates machines that were being sold as home uh, home stuff that like had lots of bands and things. And I probably yeah. had one of those at one point as well. You kind of stretched about. Um, so it's interesting to think that it can tie in to like, I guess, like rehabilitation recovery. It's a, a completely, what, what you're describing is completely different to what I imagine when you talk about pilates so when you see especially seeing it like on the tv or on social media and things i think it's often shown as something that you know people that you say that are uh, already very fit and in these like long slender bodies they'll be doing it and they'll have their you know their legs around their head and all that sort of thing and it's not yeah. actually that's not the way that it has to be at all and it and it can benefit so many different people with so many different injuries or you know that go have so many different types of lifestyle as well and um, it can really be adapted to really who you are so is this the way that you teach it then is that because you're saying adapted so really even less able bodies can get involved so wherever you are in your fitness wherever you are in your um ability that your body can do there's a starting point yeah of course yeah so um i even have actually i have an adapted an even more adapted version of pilates called chair lattes, which is a seated version for people that can't get up and down from the floor so it can even be adapted that far that you don't even need to be able to get up and down off the floor to be able to do and the exercises and to use the same principles in the way that you move um but the people that come to my um classes now um i mean that's probably the thing that you need to be able to do is to get on and off the floor if you can manage that then there will be something that you'll be able to do and there's mm. basically different levels of all the exercises that i take you through um, and so you can progress it as far as you want to go or you can stick with the easier options if they're they're going to work for you um, at the time when you come to the session 
Uh, yeah, and I think that's brilliant because like, as somebody with a chronic health condition who was years ago, like practically bedridden, the idea of joining a class can be a little bit overwhelming. So knowing that kind of wherever you are in um, what your your physical movement is, there's a, there is a starting point and you can progress, that it's not all about being like, able to get your legs above your head and kind of, I don't know handstand type level of ability with your body tell me a little bit more about like what qualifications you have to like to do the type of work that you do because I think it's really important that when we're looking out for somebody to work with um to, to have an idea of what questions we need to be asking so knowing what you have will I guess help people listening kind of have an idea of where to start maybe without asking practitioners that they come across like can you do this yeah of course and I think it, um like I said before it completely depends on where you are with your kind of exercise routine your fitness journey where what your what is your starting point and that will kind of depend on what you're looking for in an instructor so my background is to, so I qualified as a physio um, which is a three-year degree and then worked as a physio um, in hospital and then in like outpatient settings as well um, before doing my Pilates qualification um, which was with um, a class school, school called APPI um, so the way that I kind of, the route that I went down was has always been from that kind of clinical rehab mm. route um, which would probably be different to um, if you went and did Pilates in gym you're probably more likely to get someone that has maybe started off as a gym instructor possibly a personal trainer and then gone down the group exercise route and the way that they teach the class if you're um, you know a, a fit and able body person without worries about injuries or other health conditions and those classes can also be absolutely great of course yeah and um, but it really depends on what you're looking for yourself and so if you're looking for someone that's going to have like say a good understanding of any injuries or conditions that you might have then i think looking at the physio-led pilates classes can be a really good route for you to take to, because you know that you're going to be much more supported than um in a big in a big group class i mean my class as well at the moment my studio classes i've got um a maximum of seven in a class at the moment so you're getting mm. a much more like personal session than if you were to go to like a, a big gym where you might have 30 or 40 people in a class yeah and, and do you also do online lessons as well yeah so i uh, i now have an online membership um and so you basically when i take my class in my studio i have a camera and that can um so that means that you can join the class from home um, as well as having people in the studio at the same time mm. I mean I do ask when you join from home that um, I like to have a talk to you first of all just to kind of assess you and to check yeah. that what um, I'm going to offer you in my class is going to be right for you obviously it's, it's harder to give that amount of feedback when you're doing it online compared to doing it in person but I found that the online version has worked really really well for a lot of people throughout the pandemic and a lot of people are actually going to stick with it now because um, I think people are finding the convenience of doing it from home and yeah. kind of taking away like so you don't have to travel anywhere you know you don't have to you know not that I would it would matter what you look like when you came to my classes but people worry about you know what they're going to wear and you know if they put their makeup on or whatever yeah. before they come you don't have to worry about any of that um and it's meant that it's more accessible so a lot of people before the pandemic I used to have people coming to classes with me mostly once a week um and occasionally uh, maybe about 20 percent of my clients would come twice a week um, but since going moving things online, I'd say most people now come like attend at least twice a week, if not three times. Mm -hmm. I've got quite a few people that actually attend six days a week with me, so yeah. <laughs> which is amazing. Yeah, I but, mean, I think that's that's one of the good things that's come out of this sort of shift in society is mm -hmm. it is more accessible. So I, I know what's been one of my barriers to exercise, um, kind of joining a gym is just it's too much getting the getting ready the going to a place the doing the thing it, yeah. it requires so much energy so being able to just put your shoes on at home and be ready to go or you know get your water exactly. next to you it, it takes away some of the steps for for people like myself that maybe don't have as much energy as they want to spend on all these activities being able to find a way to move from your house <laughs> or like without without all those steps it's just it opens up the world doesn't it and it, it's it's just one it is one less barrier to being able to get active and and look after your body yeah yeah it's definitely finding that thing that works for you and I would say like the change I've seen in so many of my clients from them when they used to come 
like once a week. So I've been running Pilates classes for maybe like seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. And like quite a few of them have been with me from the start, but been coming once a week. But since the, like over the last 18 months, they've improved like so much by just being able to do things that little bit more consistently. And it's just amazing how much difference that consistency has made and how people um, are moving, how they're feeling and that kind of confidence in, in what they're doing with the exercises that I offer them for them to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with the fact that like, you kind of you work around pain and stuff like that, what kind of conditions would people come to you with? Does that make sense? Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. Um, so I'd say the, the biggest one is back pain. And um, that's the main reason I think that people will seek out Pilates. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people hear that oh, Pilates can be really good for back pain. And there's lots of evidence to suggest that it is. Um, and like any form of exercise, I say any maybe not any form of exercise, lots of forms of exercise have good evidence for helping with back pain. And yeah. I think Pilates is one of the things, like say, if you find the right class that, um, you know, people can do whatever their kind of starting point is. Um, so back pain is probably the main one, but I also see um, people with conditions like um, hypermobility or Stanlow syndrome, I don't know if you've heard of that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a, like part of hypermobility. Yeah. Um, so people that need to really work on on like have like a big range of movement in their joints but maybe like they have they must have had to work a lot harder than the average person to try and keep that stability uh, and to get stronger to have that control of their movement um and then people with conditions like fibromyalgia um yeah. again because like learning about the pacing and how to like build yourself into doing you know those activities more consistently and at a level that works for you that's like it's so important um in yeah. those sorts of health conditions as well um yeah. so they're probably the main the main ones i would say but i also get yeah. things people with any kind of injuries have had you know knee quite a few people with like hip and knee replacements or you know ongoing hip knee ankle shoulder injuries uh neck injuries quite often as well because a lot of it so much of it is about posture and making sure that our body is in a in a comfortable position as we're moving mm. and obviously maybe in there to check your technique and to give you advice on on the way that you're you're moving can be really helpful with those conditions as well in the introduction i said a little bit about you're a certified mummy mot practitioner what is that tell me more what is a what is a mummy mot and how does it help people yeah. so this is a, a course that i've completed fairly recently um i was actually booked to do it um maybe a year ago and obviously things just kept getting postponed and postponed but this is uh, mummy mot is a postnatal check so um after you have a baby um you should have hopefully a six-week check with your gp mm -hmm. yeah. um where they're meant to check through whether your um recovery is going well and whether you're okay to return to exercise or any other activities um and but unfortunately, I think that where the, like, the NHS has been under quite a lot of pressure for quite a long time, those checks maybe aren't quite what they used to be. Um, yeah. And it's just trying to have a service that mums can access to make sure that they are getting like checked over properly and like given the advice that they need and given the reassurance they need and even just being signposted in where um, to go to get any extra help that they might need, depending on how their recovery is going. So um, the assessments I do, they're about an hour long. And basically what we go do is I like I go through in a really like really detailed assessment with you on like kind of how like where you were before your pregnancy, um, like what your activity levels were like, what you used to do. Um, and then talking through like how how are you during your pregnancy, any like complications, any problems, how did that change, what you were able to do and how you're feeling, and then um, since how, like since giving birth kind of what your life's been like since then how the birth was and mm. um, talking about you know your baby and how you are with them how you're finding you know your your journey and then identify really really it's what what are people's goals so as a, as a physio like most of what we do is it's kind of looking at what your goals are and what it is that you want to achieve and the same with the pilates it's kind of like where do you want to get with with what you're coming to see me for so um you know, a lot of time I'll see mums that maybe were running before they had their baby or even if they weren't doing any specific exercise realizing actually since having a baby you know babies just get heavier and bigger don't they so, yeah yeah you know building that strength up um or you know a lot of time people find that they start to get like um like shoulder upper back pain from all the like lifting bending carrying twisting to get yeah car seats holding out. baby on your hip that's it yeah exactly all of those things so um just being my, like like basically going through with you like what are the problems that you're having are you having any issues what do you want to get back to and how can we how can I help you to get there 
yeah. um, and giving that reassurance on like the things that you, you can start to do when you see me um, or giving you advice around things that you might not be ready for yet um, because I think you know things can go <laughs> like kind of both ways is that sometimes I see people that have been really sporty and they're like desperate to get back to you know running but actually yeah. since having their baby they're noticing that they're having like maybe pelvic floor issues they're noticing a bit of leaking that sort of thing and actually yeah. going well you know maybe you're not quite ready to go back to that but there's things you can do to build yourself back up to going back into doing those things and it's so it really depends on what your goal is to what kind of I would do in the assessment and what advice I would give you in the assessment and where we would go with treatment for you yeah um but it's something that any like anyone can book in with me um after, after having a baby basically from six weeks postpartum any time from then so I could see you like literally six weeks after having your baby but it could be six years after like yeah. it doesn't need to be straight after if you you know you're deciding you want to go back to doing something and actually you've noticed an issue that you've never really addressed or you kind of ignored <laughs> yeah yeah uh, I mean my, my youngest is late teens and um, there is definitely still impacts on my body from pregnancy I had um SPD symphysis pubis dysfunction which mm -hmm. has left like my hips and pelvis it is misaligned and I think that so valuable that kind of service because as you've said like um our nhs is amazing but it is oversubscribed and things <laughs> do get missed and referrals do get turned down because you don't necessarily tick all the boxes so knowing that there's somewhere else you can go and link in for this support and that you don't you don't have to put up with the things that we're left with so like you said the, the pelvic floor stuff um as often we can accept or we accept as mums oh it's just part of childbirth it's part of having had babies and actually the more I'm having conversations with people it doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be and it is something that can be worked with and improved yeah definitely and I think that's what we're trying to that's I think what I'm trying to do and I think all the, I think there's about 200 of us now the mommy and mommy team practitioners is we're trying to get that word around of like you know what these things might happen and they are common but they're not normal and yeah. there are places you can go to get help and like we do there is a petition going around to try and get this um included in like NHS care um, and yeah. so I think when I did my course I think they were saying in uh, in France I think um every female in France I think gets as uh, routine 10 postnatal appointments yeah um, and we get nothing here. Um, <laughs> but I, I think the six weeks check and it very much was, how are you doing? Is everything okay? Yes, everything's fine. Okay, great. Go and carry on life as normal. Um, Cause you don't always, I mean, for me, I didn't really realize that a lot of my back pain, a lot of the, the pain that I was having with walking, some of the stuff that was going on for me was still connected to my pregnancy. And it, and it wasn't until really quite recently given the ages of my children that it's been pointed out by a medical practitioner that some of the issues I have now can be traced back to my pregnancy and to a degree were avoidable had I had the right treatment at the right yeah. time so I think yeah, yeah knowing that these services are out there and of course like that's why I was interested in talking to you with Pilates especially with your approach that um for me it's like oh this could help me so there's lots of me's out there maybe maybe it will help other people to know that this is available for them so yeah it's it's important that we kind of know that we can kind of connect in with these services like you said whether it's six weeks six years in my case 16 years after having yeah. your child because there's still you can I mean I'm assuming but you can still rehabilitate and you can still improve your quality of life with these things Exactly, definitely. Yeah, and I think that's what kind of got me down that route of doing the mummy OATs was because I was seeing um, people come into Pilates for issues like back pain things, and you talk to people and be like, oh, I've had it since I had my, my you know, my children, and that was like 10 years ago, or whatever, and then I'd have like younger mums that, you know, with younger children coming in, and they'd be like, oh, you know, I've had these issues, and I've kind of like, you know, the children being the priority, and I never really sorted it out, and, you know, I've come to Pilates to help with, you know, things like back pain, but also like strengthening my pelvic floor, and um, it's I, like those things kept coming up again and again I was like I want to know yeah. how I can help people more with that side of things it seems like it seemed like a natural progression for me to go down that route because now I know I can assess people know that bit more about them from that detailed assessment and then yeah. advise them the right route to take whether that is like a like physio treatment or whether it's going down a Pilates route or I have like a specific like postnatal um like online course I've created as well and um, kind of starts people that really 
I've actually had people that have done it that have had their, their children a few years ago, mm. but um, really just not really known where to start with exercise. And it really starts with the real basics of like just how to get your deep core muscles working, how to get your pelvic floor muscles working and just start off with that like general body awareness. Even with things like like, like cesareans, like so many people lose their sensation around there and they can't even yeah. feel their stomach muscles. Yeah. How do they, you know, how do you know if it's working if you can't even feel it? And just trying to re-educate your body and, you know, reignite those pathways between your brain and your muscles. Yeah. Uh, and I think like talking about cesareans, I don't think, or I didn't realise, having had once, how much of a serious operation it was and how, like, what actually goes on to your body, with your body and, and how, like, it does impact you. Um, again, that was still in the scheme of when I had my children, quite a new revelation, probably from watching a medical show. Um, I was like, oh, that that's what happens. Because I think when you go through that, the experience, you don't necessarily, you don't get all the information, especially if it's an emergency cesarean, you don't get all of the information. Yeah. Um, you, you're so happy that you've got a baby and you're kind of just busy being a mum. And it isn't until for some women a lot long after when it's like oh what's this going on with this bit of my body and what's that going on and you you maybe do a little bit of research and like oh I hadn't really considered how much of a major thing having a cesarean is on my body and that yeah like getting your muscles back to where they need to be um takes a bit of work it's not not everyone just bounces back to that sort of state of <laughs> no core. and I think the thing to keep in mind is very few people do bounce back and I think the yeah. media again shows the celebrities that have gone back to doing whatever they were doing before and they've you know got a six-pack again straight and, and like it's that's not it's not reality and I think that's you know it's very rare that you would be in yeah. that position to do that yeah. um and with that yeah with the cesarean as well I was going to say when you're just talking then um you know, are there any other other operation that you would have where you have a sur you know quite major, major surgery, surgery you get sent yeah. home from the hospital like the next day and yeah. then you are in a situation where you're having to um lift move and carry you know this like probably eight possibly more pounds baby around yeah. all day having very little sleep having very little rest like are there any other operations where you'd be expected to do that you'd be told to go home and rest right yeah yeah I mean I think we I seem to remember being told not to drive and to try not to lift things yeah but I mean it's not a reality is it and, so and of course we do just kind of no. power through don't we so it's no wonder we end up in a position where yeah we kind of need a little bit of reconnecting with our body and a little bit of um, rehabilitation around yeah. these things so the mummy MOT is something that because I'm, I'm is it something that people come to clinic for yeah, so that's yeah. all done in clinic. Yeah, so, yeah, so you're um, based in Essex. I'm based in Essex. Yeah, but if you're um, like any wherever you are in the country, Mummy MOT actually have a practitioner like search function. So if you go onto okay. Mummy MOT, if you Google Mummy MOT, go onto there and there's this button that says find your local practitioner. You just put your postcode in and it will tell you who is your nearest practitioner. So you can find we're all over the country. So yeah, um, yeah, so you can find us that way. But it is something I was yeah talking to some people about doing them online and like probably through the pandemic there, there are ways to do parts of the assessment online but I would say actually at least the first appointment is something you want to do in person you'll get more yeah I think it, it feels like as you're talking about it it feels like something that needs to be almost like a face-to-face -face kind of yeah. interaction thing yeah. especially, especially if there are pelvic floor issues with it because yeah. they're like lots of things we do, we're doing are like assessing like things like looking at your function and how you move is something that we could see on a video call but actually like feeling your, your strength and yeah. like the pelvic and floor, uh, pelvic floor assessments we do, like you can see certain parts of it like externally, but it's something that you, you need to um, look like it's internal as well. So that's something that yeah. we would need to, to see. So it's a yeah. full, it's a full proper physical MOT type of, yeah. um, and this is so interesting. Um, and I wish I knew more about this before we talked because I would have you come on and do a full podcast about it because it's something I've been noticing like um, in the areas that I'm in about health that people are having more conversations about it and it is becoming more of a, a, a holistic way of working as opposed to, oh, you've got a problem with your pelvic floor, just do some Kegels or we'll sew a mesh in there or we'll do something that surgical, surgical option. Like when I, I've had these conversations before, it's very, it seemed to quite an extreme thing of do some 
do the pelvic floor exercises or oh they don't work for you here let's do a surgical oh, option yeah. it did yeah. seem for, to me that like nothing in between <laughs> yeah um and unfortunately as women um, some some of our healthcare is <laughs> is a little extreme it is a little either ignored or surgical option so to know that there's yeah. this middle ground is yeah. I think really valuable and the fact that it ties in with like the Pilates and the exercise view, because even though I, I hear it's a completely different thing but you can then you can then say these Pilates things will help because I yeah, guess not every mummy MOT practitioner will have the same background as you there'll be different different backgrounds and different um specialities that people bring along with them yeah so I think to do the course I think you need to be a physio and osteopath so we're, we're going to have like a kind of a similar background in our training okay but when I did the course I found that it was really um I say really helpful like a lot of it seemed really familiar to me already because so yeah. much of the rehab that we spoke about from the assessment and actually the way that you assess people was so similar to lots of the stuff that I do with my Pilates anyway and when I assess yeah. someone to come to a Pilates class or um even like assessing the way that someone is and um, like someone's technique and how they're moving through the exercises a lot of that had like had a massive overlap so yeah. that's again why it can kind of clarify that actually it was a really good thing for me to be doing to kind of tie in with what I was already providing at, at my clinic and with my business yeah and, and Pilates is like you say it's something we can do in the gym it's all of these other things so if it makes people or I guess as a woman, you feel more okay with coming along and talking to somebody who's got this other experience about like more intimate stuff. Well, for me, that's what it feels like for me. It feels more like it's, it's destigmatizing. It's getting rid of the taboos around it. It is making it more like, hey, like this, I mean, I don't know the statistics. You maybe do know the statistics, but there are so many women that have pelvic floor issues and and not always women that have had children I think it is something that can affect yeah. all women um yeah and to be able to this become more of a thing that you can actually go and check out in a a non-medical even though it is medical with I guess is physiotherapy medical I class it as medical yeah yeah we, I mean we can as healthcare yeah but I think yeah. it, like you say it's having that more relaxed environment because I think although in physio we are healthcare I think especially kind of the way that I run my business with it being a lot of Pilates classes people see it as it's quite a community thing and yeah. like you say hopefully it's somewhere that people feel relaxed and people I mean people do tell me like everything about themselves and I'm more than happy for people to do that but again yeah. like, like that's such a good thing if people feel like they can open up to you and they trust you and they they trust you to tell you these things and I think that's hard when you go to sometimes like a medical professional you kind of I guess you know that you know you're talking to a professional so sometimes that is okay to open up to but if you've already got that bit of a relationship with someone and you're feeling comfortable about talking to them and like I say we're trying to remove that to build about talking about about our pelvic health and the more I think the more we can make it you know that everyone realizes that it is it's a common thing that you know so many people need help with like you say whether you've had a baby or not people can have issues with it and there are things you can do I think I'm not sure on the exact statistics but it's something like if you have like a pelvic pelvic floor issue there's like if you get treatment and rehab for it there's like a 75 percent chance that you're going to improve your symptoms like it's a huge mm. amount you can do from conservative measures yeah, yeah. Um, and I think people kind of like say so many people just think they have it and they live with it because it's not spoken about and you know a lot of the problems do come from after having children and you think like what percentage of women have children like a lot of them <laughs> like, yeah, there's a lot yeah. of people that are walking around yeah. that could have these problems that I've just never mentioned them because they just think that it can never you know it should never be spoken about and we want to yeah we want to try and change that yeah. it's just or, like any other part of our body right yeah when we have our uh, doctor's bad ankle, bad back. yeah exactly like you say when we have our doctor's appointment it's usually five ten minutes and like even like six weeks check after, after having your baby it's very it can be very quick it can be very like you've, you've focused more on baby stuff aren't you and sort of how you're getting on with like the immediate things and it's so easy to sort of over, like you say overlook and kind of and then it kind of can go on and on and on and you feel a bit like oh well I just deal with this thing much like back pain and all this other stuff we just get used to it and it isn't until you kind of go oh <laughs> oh you have this problem yeah. too oh but you went and That's saw it. somebody and they helped you with it oh okay there is some hope I can I can yeah, work through expensive. this the more we can spread the word that way obviously that yeah the better yeah. and that's the story that I've had on repeat I think from people that have come to see me in clinics and so become a mummy OT practitioner is that 
people will, uh, women will go to their six week check. And actually I think most of the time now, I think it might depend on your area, but a lot of the time they're combined with the baby's eight week check. So you're going yeah. for the baby, but your six week check is combined in that appointment. But especially um, the uh, patients I had that have been first time mums, like this is their, like their first baby and everything's about the baby. And then they complete, they come out of the appointment and some of them said, oh, actually, we didn't even like, they didn't even ask me anything about me because I had all this mm. list of questions about the baby. I've completely forgot about myself. And that's yeah. it. You, you know, yeah. off you go. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing all that with me. Um, because I know we were going to talk a lot more about Pilates, but that I think it's just so important, isn't it? I think hopefully people are listening feel like they've they've heard enough about Pilates and they understand Pilates enough that they can link in with somebody yourself or somebody else. Um, but yeah, definitely this mummy MOT sounds brilliant. So um, I will put links everywhere for the things that you do. So thank you so much for coming on and speaking with me. Um, this feels like if it's okay with you, a kind of a good place to bring it to a close. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you kind of want to leave people with or do you feel that we've covered everything that you wanted to talk about today? Yeah, I think we've covered everything. I just I did just want to say, so hopefully taken from the conversation that, you know, wherever you are, whether, you know, you're having any you know, pain, injury, like strength issues, weakness issues, uh, suffering with any other medical conditions, hopefully like it's made you realise that there are ways that you can access someone that's going to help you with building like either a rehab programme or an exercise programme that can work for you, that that you can do, that you can work on that will help yourself. And I think that's what, you know, people in my profession, that's what you want to do is you want to help you and get you, you feeling better, moving more and getting you back to doing the things that you really want to do. And I hope it, it's made you realise that if you can find the right person to help you, that there's someone out there that's going to get you achieving those goals. Thank you. And that's and I would echo that, that wherever you are, um, there, there will be somebody out there that can help you get nearer to where you want to be. So it's it's it is taking that first step of reaching out to people and, and finding that right person to work with, I think, for me. So thank you so much for coming on and speaking with me. And thank you to everyone who's listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. To connect, find out more about me and my guest, visit srtt.co.uk or follow our SRTD podcast on social media. I'll be back next Wednesday with a new guest. Until then, stay curious and be kind to yourself.